Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel. My name is Mike. I'm continuing my 2013 NFL Draft Team by Team Analysis Recap and Final Grades. This video is for the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers had 11 picks total in this draft. The first of those picks was pick number 18 overall. They trade up to the middle of the first round to grab Eric Reed, the safety from LSU. If you watch my videos, guys, you know I was pretty high on Eric Reed, uh, being because you know, he's an experienced player at LSU, made big plays in big games, and the only detriments to his game was the fact that he was over aggressive at times, and you know maybe at times got some costly penalties, put his teams in some bad situations from that perspective. But I think that's all stuff that can be coached. He has excellent instincts. He's good in coverage, and again, he's not afraid to come up and lay the wood. And he reminds me of a younger Deshaun Goldson when Deshaun Goldson was first bursting on the scene. So I think this is a natural fit for a guy to replace Goldson. And while he won't be, you know, a pro bowler right off the bat, I personally think he has pro bowl potential, especially playing with the talent around him on this defense. And out of all these 11 picks, he's the one guy that will likely see some playing time right away on a completely loaded team that just added depth and good players in this draft. Um, as I'll get to as I do my analysis here. But I really like to fit Eric Reed, number 18, uh, to the 49ers. The next pick, pick 40. Uh, the 49ers jump on Tank Carradine. Uh, the, he was a defensive end in a 4-3 of Florida State. He'll project to be an outside linebacker in that 3-4 49ers scheme. And make no mistake about it, Tank Carradine is a pass rusher. I mean, this guy had 11 sacks in 11 games before getting hurt last season, hurting his ACL. He came back enough to run a 4-7-40 um, at the Florida State Pro Day. Had it not been for the injury, you would have saw him along with his defensive end counterpart at Florida State Bjorn Werner go in the first round, but Carradine slips to the second only because of that injury, and you know he won't be pressured into playing right away uh, for the 49ers. You know they have Ahmad Brooks, Alden Smith, uh, Harrelson as well at the outside linebacker spot, so he can come in, fit in nicely. Maybe at some point this season be a situational pass rusher, but if not, definitely get on the field in 2014 and make a difference for the pass rushing deep and talented San Francisco 49ers. Pick number 55, they went out and got another tight end, Vance McDonald from Rice. This is the other guy from this draft I think will get um, significant playing time this year. Look for them to try to insert him into that Delaney Walker mold. Delaney Walker left for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Vance McDonald, more of a pure pass catcher than Walker. I happen to really like Walker, um, but he's not. this guy is not the blocker that Walker was, but he's probably just as good of a pass catcher. So look for them to have some sets where they line him wide, use him in different ways, kind of like the Patriots using Aaron Hernandez to Vernon Davis's Rob Gronkowski. Pat, pick number 88. Uh, they, again, got value in the pass rushing department with Corey Lemonier from Auburn. Look, Lemonier is a guy had 17 sacks in his career at Auburn. If it hadn't been for how bad Auburn was, how much of a cloud was over that program the last couple of years, I think he would have been in that first, late first, second round range. Um, but sometimes that has an effect on a player. I think it affected Lemonier. But, again, they add more depth in the pass rushing department, something I love when good teams do because they're looking to the future. And what you're seeing Trent Baalke do here is, is build a team that's going to be good for years and years. I'm not going to say dynasty yet because they haven't won a Super Bowl, but as soon as they do, you'll hear dynasty talk attached to this team and with the talent they have and the talent they have backing up that talent. Gee, man, they're going to be a tough team to, to hang with in the next couple of years. And uh, the, for me... The pick I think that was the best value um, at to me is still a need position for them was pick number 128. They picked Quinton Patton, the wide receiver from Louisiana Tech. If you don't know much about this guy, he had 1,400 yards receiving, a little below 1,400 yards receiving last year in his senior year, had 13 touchdowns at Louisiana Tech. He's not an off the charts athleticism guy. He, he ran a 4.540, had a 33 inch vertical leap, which aren't terrible numbers but they're not in a 4-3-4-4 range like some of the receivers were. But what he lacks in athleticism, he's a precise route runner. He's not afraid to go over the middle. He's still six feet tall, so his size is not an issue. And look for him right now this year. I think he's better than A.J. Jenkins, but look for him to, to compete for time 
at that spot, that third receiver spot behind Michael Crabtree and Anquan Bolden. They have Anquan Bolden for one season, and I look for Quinton Patton to step up and be that guy to run all those tough routes, go over the middle, not afraid to take a hit. And, you know, I love this pick. I love productive guys who are tough and fundamentally sound and who have good enough measurables. I like the way they equate to the NFL, and I think they got that here in Quinton Patton at 128. Pick 131 was Marcus Lattimore, the running back from South Carolina. Again, huge risk-reward with this pick. They'll probably have to do a pro version of a red shirt this year while Lattimore recuperates, but that's okay because they have Frank Orr, of course, Kendall Hunter, and LaMichael James in front of him. And you have another guy, again, waiting in the wings, uh, more of an every down back, sort of in that Frank Gore mold if he can develop. And maybe eventually if he pans out the ultimate way they probably plan, he's that replace every down back replacement for a guy like Frank Gore. Uh, pick number 157, Quinton Dial from Alabama. Dial's a big defensive end. Over 300 pounds, defensive end will fit into that 3-4 scheme at an end position. And again, a guy to add depth. Maybe now if, if a Justin Smith goes down, you, you maybe see Dial or or some of these other guys get in the mix that they've added here. But I like the Dial pick because he comes from a winning program, and he's body type-wise perfect for that 3-4 end spot. Um, Nick Moody, the linebacker from Florida State, again, just added to, um, to add depth here. Uh, he's a converted safety to linebacker and will be sort of molded on to provide depth as well. Pick 237, an intriguing pick, B.J. Daniels, the quarterback, from South Florida. He'll probably get in the mix as a backup to Kaepernick. I like this pick because he's not as good as Colin Kaepernick, but he's a similar style, big arm, athletic, and I am totally on board and I believe in backing up your starter with a guy that can run the same offense as him. And that's what you get in a BJ Daniels who could be a big steal here late in the draft as he's a perfect fit offensively for what the 49ers like to do. Pick 246 and pick 252. They pick Carter Bykowski, the tackle from Iowa State, and pick 252, Marcus Cooper, the corner from Rutgers. With Bykowski, they get a guy who was thought to maybe be able to go in the fourth or fifth round. They get him even later than that. Long arms, still a developmental guy that's got to put on muscle, but again, just used to add depth. And so was the addition of Marcus Cooper, the cornerback from Rutgers. Guys, let me know what you thought of the San Francisco 49ers draft. I give them, I give them an A because they addressed the needs they needed to address, most notably um, Eric Reed and also replacing Delaney Walker. This team doesn't have many needs, guys. And I thought they improved their receiver position with Patton. And they added depth at other positions, which I think is going to pay off in spades for them as we develop here, as they develop, the more this team is together. So let me know what you guys think. Guys, join the conversation in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, guys. You guys see all the videos. I've uploaded over 500 videos here on YouTube. So be sure to join the conversation, subscribe, and have a great night. And, um, you know, let me know what you guys think. Thank you.